Black and hemp continue to receive a lot of attention in 2020, but unfortunately, both crops had some tough, tough years. Uh, if we look at tobacco, our acreage was down about 10 to 15 percent in response to some reductions in contract volume. And as far as burley, you know, our cuts are due primarily just to the fact that we're seeing a reduced price competitiveness in the world market over the past few years. This uh, red line here represents the U average U.S. export price. And the blue and gold bars here represent the average price of imported tobacco burley into the U.S. market. So again, you see that widening price differential. And as a result, we've seen our leaf exports of burley tobacco fall off considerably over this time frame, while imports have remained relatively steady even in the midst of declining cigarette production. But despite these challenging demand conditions, I do think the 2020 market will be a decent one. Uh, one that the uh, poundage out there is probably going to be less than what USDA is anticipating, is what the industry is uh, indicating. We've had a pretty good growing uh, curing season this year. Um, the industry tells us we've got some tightening global supplies. And we're seeing cigarette sales both here in the United States as well as globally moderate a little bit in the midst of this global pandemic. And as a result of these factors here, I think uh, burley prices for those of our growers out there that have good quality crops will be maybe as much as 10 cents a pound or even higher above what we uh, saw from the 2019 crop. So hopefully, you know, averaging a little bit above $2 a pound. What about the dark tobacco? Uh, you know, dark tobacco experienced some very, very large cuts in 2020, primarily dark fire cured tobacco is one of our, our major uh, buyer uh, pulled back uh, considerably on dark tobacco contracts. And it wasn't due to the fact that we had a significant fall off in smokeless production. It's just due to the fact that we had such large crops the past couple of years in the midst of, uh, you know, estimates that, that smokeless production would not continue to grow at the same pace as it has in the past. And as a result, we had a pretty significant pullback in dark tobacco contract volume. Just like with Burley, probably the crop size may end up being a little bit lower than what USDA is expected or uh, projecting right now. Uh, and these acres are somewhat boosted by the fact that we've had around 3,000 acres of Connecticut broadleaf uh, being available to our producers to offset some of these declines in burley and dark tobacco contracts. Uh, dark tobacco prices, I think, will be a little bit higher, just like we're seeing in burley for the 2020 crop. But even with these higher prices, uh, these large contract volumes and reduction in burley acres we've seen in recent years in dark tobacco this year are going to pull down the value of tobacco production uh, below $250 million this year, about $100 million off our 10-year average. As far as 2021, even though we're seeing some challenging demand conditions out there, I do think contract volumes for uh, both types may end up being uh, fairly stable. Uh, somewhat accommodated by exiting burley growers out there, but also just due to the fact that we have more favorable supply and demand for both uh, burley and dark leaf, I think heading into 2021. Those profit margins, unfortunately, are gonna continue to be squeezed with ongoing higher labor costs and the gap requirements. Uh, we continue to be, you know, find it difficult to see improvements in our yields and uh, those contract prices have not improved much uh, over the last several years as well. And just the ongoing uncertainty of regulations, taxes, immigration, trade, and just the emergence of new products out there continues to result in a lot of uncertainty for both burley and dark tobaccos. What about him? Well, one thing I think is safe to say is we learned a lot, all of us, from uh, the 2009 crop uh, going into 2020. One of the things that uh, we all learned is that these unsustainable price and profit expectations 
cannot exist in an industry with limited barriers to entry. You know, the 2018 Farm Bill basically opened it up nationally for producers to uh, jump on the bandwagon in terms of hemp production. And just like our tobacco farmers were looking for that magic crop out there, we had livestock and grain farmers in 2018 and 2019 that were, you know, struggling and looking for that uh, crop that would uh, be the answer to their farming operation. And as a result, we saw hemp acreage uh, triple from 2017 to 2018 and probably increased by a factor of three to four in 2018. And as a result of uh, just this excessive explosion in hemp acres out there, we saw biomass production um, or biomass prices um, of hemp to fall 75% or greater. We also learned that infrastructure for emerging industries does not occur overnight. You know, we had all this crop available, but the processing capacity just wasn't there. And given all this regulatory uncertainty, we had some pull out of some of the investment dollars. Um, looking at 2020, um, you know, a number of growers, those that applied for a license remain relatively constant here in Kentucky but our acreage pulled back considerably in 2020 is some of these growers here that applied for a license just didn't have any intentions of growing the crop and the other growers pulled back their acreage given the declining prices. Nationally, we saw a pullback in hemp acres, maybe not as large as we experienced here in Kentucky, but even with that pullback in acreage, uh, both here in Kentucky as well as nationally, even with the growing hemp products, uh, product sales out there, we still had too much hemp on the market. And as a result, those uh, prices remain very, very challenged uh, in 2020 for both uh, biomass as well as for grain and, and fiber. Looking at 2021, you know, I think this continuation of depressed price outlook and excess supplies uh, available of harvested materials from several crop years is going to continue and that's going to reduce the number of acres as well as the number of growers. And we're just got an industry that's just trying to find itself. It's trying to work off these excess supplies of harvested material. Uh, the industry is trying to find out which hemp products out there of all the different products that we can utilize the hemp crop for, which ones are cost competitive and which ones have the consumer appeal moving forward. And we're also dealing with a crop with a lot of uncertainty that's going to continue to lead to some limited investments in infrastructure investments uh, moving forward. The industry needs some answers, needs some answers on the regulatory front on testing. A lot of the challenges on who's going to be doing the testing and when and what THC levels as we plead to FDA and other government agencies to get direction on that as well as the destruction of crops that test above at 0.3%. And the industry out there wants some direction on the ability to market CBD uh, at a national level in various foods and beverages and feed. My last slide that I'll share with you is just some common challenges and outcomes that I've learned. We've all learned about tobacco over the years that I think have some similarities with the hemp industry. I think one thing we have to realize is both of these are commodities and that we've got a lot of competition out there globally. And as a result, the lowest cost producer is going to win out. Both these crops we know face a lot of regulatory uncertainty, a lot of risk, uh, a lot of market concentration that we've seen in tobacco, I think is going to involve in the hemp industry as well as this industry materialize, uh, matures. Uh, we're going to con see consolidation in the number of growers and businesses that are able to survive. Hopefully some niche markets out there for some specialty crop producers to meet uh, certain grower specs or certain buyer specs. Uh, contracting, as we found in tobacco, is probably going to be the dominant price discovery system for hemp. Uh, the hemp industry will probably experiment a lot with tobacco to see whether or not mechanization will evolve given their labor challenges. And finally, for both these crops, uh, certainly profits are important, but trust and transparency amongst the buyers can be vitally uh, important moving forward 
uh, as this industry continues to try to find itself in the midst of a lot of uncertainty.